Hi, book friends. I'm Erin, and this is Erin Go Read. It's February 1st, and this is my February TBR. I have a couple things at play this month to consider, so I will not be telling you the books that I will be judging for the BookTube prize. The judging starts February 1st and goes through the end of March, so I have two months to read six books. I've already read two of the books on my the first grouping that I have um, of all fiction books, and I do plan to reread at least one of those. So I uh, hope to read two to three of those books the, this month as well. And then I have a couple books that uh, I am finishing up from last month, and I have some books for Black History Month. So we'll start off with my Down the Rabbit Hole with Alice project. So starting with Alice in Wonderland, I basically plan to jump from book to book based on, on this book made me think of this book and on and on and on. So from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, I'm going to go to In an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. So um, this is a series that I've been interested in. It involves a home or a school where kids from literature who have been into portal worlds uh, come because no one can kind of understand what that has been like to have gone to this other world and now just uh, and then be back in the real world. And so Alice goes to a portal world, goes to Wonderland, and so that's how I got to In an Absent Dream. Also, it's a nice short book, so um, that should help. And then I'm about a third of the way through Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. This is a uh, kind of a dark mystery. So, um, Bridie, our main character, is some sort of, uh, like, private investigator. A man's daughter, Christabel, has gone missing, but he doesn't want to go tell the police because there's something very different about Christabel, and he won't even tell Bridie, the woman he's counting on finding his daughter, uh, exactly what's going on. So there's a lot of mystery shrouded in this, a lot of dark things. Also, uh, a dead man, a dead boxer, Ruby, is kind of following Bridie along and is like her uh, almost like sidekick and uh, nobody else can see him. He's just this ghost that is just conversing with her along the way. I'm not loving it as much as I would want to and I think it's mostly to do with I think I have a bit of a bit uh, I have a bit of a book hangover from Dear Edward which you'll see talked about in my vlog and in my, my in my January wrap-up later on. And then I am reading the nonfiction book Brainwash by David and Austin Perlmutter, father and son. And this is essentially about how, given the way that our brain works, and then given our modern lifestyle with technology and uh, food, the, the, the inputs that we get into our body and our brain, how that can actually change the way that we think, and not always for the good. And so how, um, and then and then kind of tools to undo that, use our neuroplasticity in order to work more to our benefit rather than to our detriment. And then one just kind of random book seemingly is Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout and that matches my sweatshirt. Um, the sequel to this, uh, Olive again, is one of the book is, is on the book two prize long list. I had a personal recommendation from someone whose taste I very much respect uh, for both books and so I was planning it to this one, this one anyway so now I will be prepared when I need to read Olive again. Then we get into our Black History Month books. In the States, February is Black History Month, and I like to think I read pretty well diversely. I actually, when thinking about what I was gonna read this year, I went back and looked at last year and say, I think I read diversely, but how many books by by Black authors did I read last year? How many, how many books by basically non-white authors did I read last year? So out of 129 books that I read last year, 13 were Black and 24 were non-white. Not great numbers. I definitely thought I had read more diversely than that. I think a big part of it is it's just not something I think of necessarily when I'm reading a book. Um, other than Black History Month, it's specifically a time where I'm focused on reading diversely, particularly reading Black authors. But as I was going through the list of the books that I read last year, there were a whole bunch of authors that I had to look up because I didn't know what they looked like. Um, and every single one of them that I ended up looking up turned out to be white. But anyway, I have two fiction and two nonfiction books, and these fiction books are are kind of uh, part of the my are part of my desire to kind of read the canon. And these books are both are on the PBS Great American Read list, and I think one is on the BBC uh, Books That Changed Our World or Influenced or Shaped Our World books, the BBC's Books That Shaped Our World list. 
So the first is Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. And this story is about our main character, Janie Crawford, a black woman, about her marriages, her love, her life in the Deep South. And I think everyone I know who's read this has nothing but great things to say about it. I know the challenging part is the very thick dialect. Um, but I've heard that once you kind of get into it, then um, it's not a problem. So yeah, looking forward to that. And then we have Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. And really all I know about this story is it has to do with British colonialism in Africa. And then we have a couple nonfiction books. I picked this up just recently. This is The Source of Self Self-Regard by Toni Morrison. And this is like an essay collection. Um, there's uh, like speeches in here. Um, so this sounds like a really interesting look into Toni Morrison's mind. I've only read one book by her that was I read Beloved last year, I think during Black History Month, but it might have been later in the year. I'm not sure. And then we have a memoir by Jesmyn Ward. This is Men We Reaped. I read one of her novels last year, Sing Unburied Sing, and I absolutely loved it. The thing that really stood out to me about her writing, at least in her fiction writing, was that she can write such terrible things in a beautiful way. So there's this really interesting juxtaposition between this beautiful writing but terrible subject matter. And I'm interested to see how that translates into a memoir. So these are the eight books that I plan to read in the month of February. Fortunately, it's a leap year, so I have that one extra day. I can get, think I'm going to need it. Uh, I will probably end up having to do some of these via audiobook in order to get through them all. I'd love to know if you're participating in Black History Month and what you're choosing to read for that, or have you read any of these? Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes. Mm -hmm.